In a world filled with sissies, snowflakes, and spineless morons, we have to provide you with our disclaimer. So here it goes. The following is for entertainment purposes only and is purely the opinion of Fallout Shelter's host, Pat Mitchell and Tino. You should not construe any information or other material as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Oh, and one more thing. If you don't have a sense of humor, then you're probably in the wrong place. Enjoy. Day trading is a beautiful thing. The study of support and resistance. But I prefer to see it as the study of change. And the two people making that change, Trick and Tino with Fallout Shelter, they're never in danger. They are the danger. Now, say their names. You're goddamn right. Well, there you have it, folks. Yeah. Mr. Walter White, we are the danger. The best villain, I think, of all time. One of the best. Yeah. Yeah, that I was a great show, hey? Dude. Best. I think one of the best shows ever. Yeah, man. And, and his character, just the downfall of his character throughout the whole show is just amazing. The writing mm -hmm. on that show, everything about that show is awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, really, really good show. It was one of those shows, the second it was over, you just instantly missed it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. fuck. Yeah, you know what? You know what's funny about Breaking Bad is that when it first came out, I had no desire to watch it. Me neither. It because it had to do with, like, meth. And it was like, I want nothing to do with that show. I couldn't be bothered with that, that type of drug. Um, it's definitely not a glamorous drug. So it's just like, it's just something that really didn't appeal to me. And... Um, yeah, it ended up. I, I think I gave it like three seasons, at yeah. least three seasons before yeah. I started watching it. Same here. Yeah. I watched it. I think I started watching it on the fifth season. I just kept hearing about it. Yeah. Everybody's talking about it. I'm like, because well, I don't watch TV really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I kept hearing about it. Finally, I'm like, oh, I'll give it a shot. I watched the first episode from the first one. I was hooked. I yeah. was like, I, I, I couldn't stop watching it. Such a great show. Such a oh, great yeah. show. And, you know, at that time, too, when Breaking Bad was out, um, especially within the first, you know, three, four, five seasons, something like that, uh, TV was so fucking good at that time, man. There were yeah. so many shows. Like, there was, uh, you know, The Walking Dead just kind of came out in and around that time. Dexter, I think. Yeah, Dexter. Dexter was another great show. I was actually yeah. really looking forward to that one. I watched that one from the beginning. That's something that I've always been interested in. So, yeah, uh, yeah, really, really good show. Uh, what else was at that time? Fuck, there were so yeah, many awesome I shows. I don't remember what else, but. Yeah, so many awesome shows. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, really, uh, yeah, Breaking Bad, man, they got to they gotta come out with a, another show like that. You know, well, another that, like really binge worthy show. That that better call Saul's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's a good show, but it's definitely I could I could kind of take it or leave it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I've watched a couple of seasons and yeah, it's good, but it's it's not something that I'm just like I need to see. Yeah, right. The only the only show that's kind of like comparable to like that level of TV would be Billions right now. You have yeah. you started watching it? No, yet? man, I, it's on Showtime. I don't have Showtime. Oh, and uh, it's on, and you, no, it's yeah, on Amazon Prime. Yeah, but they they whack you four dollars an episode. I think every season. Oh, no, like, do they? Yeah, because it's not it's not on Prime. You got to just buy it or rent it. Well, where the fuck have I been watching it? Do you have Showtime? No. Huh. Oh, I think I, it's probably from like popcorn time or something like. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where. Um, yeah, gotta be. I thought it was on Amazon Prime, man. But it's on Amazon Prime, vi Amazon Video, but you gotta you gotta pay for it. Oh, so. okay. Not cheap like that. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't be paying fucking five bucks an episode or whatever the fuck. <laughs> no, fuck no, that, man. It's a great show, though. I mean, I would yeah. I would definitely get something like. Uh, uh, Cody or or uh, uh, popcorn time. I mean, it's yeah. it's a great fucking show. So uh, yeah, 
But the problem is a lot of these shows, they, they, they're just like, they're kind of short. They have like, you know, like eight episodes in a season and it's like, yeah. they release the season all at once. And yeah. it's like, <laughs> I think Narcos did that. Yeah. Narcos yeah, that, is good too. And that, that ended. Show. Yeah. That end, ended pretty quickly too. Yeah. Well, th- there's one that I was talking about, uh, that I just told you about that bad blood. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know about that one. Yeah. That's a really good one. It's on Netflix. It's about the uh, Rizzuto crime family in oh, Montreal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, there's only like six episodes, though. Yeah. I didn't realize when I started it, because I, to be honest, I probably wouldn't even start it, because I fucking hate that. There's one season and then six episodes. It's still yeah. definitely worth a watch. It's great, but... You know, you know what else is awesome? You porn. Yeah, you porn's a... Yeah, you porn is <laughs> ah. great. <laughs> it's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful stuff. <laughs> uh, well, uh, welcome everyone to Follow Shelter with Trick and Tino, episode 34. Good morning, everybody. It's not morning, though. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Morning, everybody. That's, that's the DJ voice. Yeah. So, folks, we have had a wild start to the week. Uh, no surprise to... Uh, myself or any of the Trick Trades members. Uh, it's something that I've discussed in great detail how last week was going to play out pretty well candle to candle as well as today. And I mean, Tino can attest to that. All the members can yeah. attest to it. Right. Especially the mentoring members can attest to it because you know, I went over the state of the market and exactly yeah. what was going to happen uh, basically candle by candle since last week. And it's so far it's there. You, you know, it's great. I'll, I just want to cut you off real quick and just say this. We've been talking about this for a while. Everybody's panicking. Like everybody out there, the manics crash and markets crash, whatever. The trick trades is embracing this whole thing. Oh yeah. Like we're looking forward to it. Yeah, exactly. And we've got strategies set up just for what's, what's coming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's because awesome. it, a lot of people will tell you, especially in, you know what, that Tino and I have had this discussion before. You know, a lot of people from, uh, you know, whether you trade penny stocks or not, whatever, I think you guys will end up coming around at some point. Uh, once you get your ass handed to you enough, you'll come over to, you know, trading proper stocks, but that's your prerogative for now. But anyways, um, you see a lot of people in penny land that are like, oh yeah, I can't wait for the market to crash and bear market this and bear market that. It's like, that really doesn't overly affect you. Yeah. Not with, you know, low float penny junk that you guys trade. It doesn't really affect you. And to be honest, if you're trading low float garbage, they're going to go away, guys. If we go into a full blown uh, bear market, to where it's going to be, you know, a pullback for a year or two. What do you think is going to happen to the low float garbage? Do you really think that there's going to be all these plays? Why do you think it's been so slow in Pennyland right now? Like, yeah. you know, the, the guys that I see on Twitter that are just like, oh, yeah, bring on the bear market and they're, they're penny stock traders. It's like, well, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you know, like, the, yeah, you're already actually in a bear market. You're already in a bear market in small caps. The IWM, I mean, take a look at that. The IWM uh, had already broke key levels. Um, I think that was Friday. I think it was Friday when it technically went into a bear market or it might have been early this morning it went into bear market. And there's a reason why there's only like one or two plays during the day for you guys. So it's like... <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys think it's just because it's to my advantage for you to come trade proper stocks. Nah, that's not why I get all pissy about people trading penny stocks, especially new traders. You want to be a, a so-called professional trader and, and trade penny stocks, go right ahead. Fill, fill your boots. If you're able to turn a real buck at it, and I mean a proper buck, consistently, consistently make money trading that shit go right ahead. You found your place in the market by all means. I still think that with, with a, with your type of skill, if you are a legitimate trader that you could do way better trading proper stocks. Okay. Because they just respond to support and resistance, especially if you're a technical trader, they'll respond to these, uh, these levels and te of technical support and resistance way better, way cleaner. Um, you know, but <sighs> 
you know, I just, I don't get it. It's, it's the bear market will have nothing to do with you. Not really, you know, not really. It will to some extent, there's always going to be some play going on, but you know, um, you know, low flow shit is, is something I've said before. They can go away guys. You remember when low floats went away for about two months or so? That's nothing. They'll go away for two years. Okay. What are you going to do then? You're going to just not trade. And that's what a lot of, a lot of traders did because they don't know how to trade these types of stocks, the, the, the proper stocks. So they had to stop trading. There wasn't anything there for them. And they dwindled their accounts down chasing these, this, this shit that just, there wasn't really a play. It was just all nonsense, right? So I'm telling you guys, this market right now is absolutely incredible. How much fun did we have today trading today? Yeah. My God, it was a you, great day. You know, it's crazy. I don't think people realize the spy is at February's lows. Like, I don't think yeah. people, and remember that freak out last February? Yeah. When it just, it dumped out, the spy dumped out huge. We're right there, 252.71. Yeah, we're right there. And if you know what, go look at our Instagram, go look at Trick Trades on Instagram and look at the chart we posted this morning on the spy. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you made that chart. We're yep. at 10% already. Yeah. We don't have too much fire to go to 20% full on recession. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like we talked about last week, you know, you draw a trend line from 2009 to where we are now, man, we still got a ways to come down yeah. before it touches that trend line. Yeah, we're nowhere near. We're no. nowhere near being done yet. We're, we're, we're just about getting 30, started. Yeah, we're about 20 points away from touching that trend line. Yeah. So, man. Today is the first day of it. In my opinion, today is the first day of it. We cat cracked major support, major short term support, and at that two fifty nine eighty five ish, two yeah two fifty nine eighty five, okay, and then the next level down was two fifty eight sixty two. All right, those were key levels. It blew through those like yeah. butter, man. It cracked those within the first, I think first 15 minutes of the market open and, and then it came back up and then it slammed right back down. And I remember uh, right when that was happening this morning, I said it would blow through and then it would come back up. But then I figured it was going to chop for a little bit and it didn't, it didn't chop for a little bit. It came right back through it. That's crazy guys. That's incredible market weakness. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm telling you, man, I said that last week, candle for candle, what it was going to do, and it did that. And then I said, come Monday morning, it was going to slam down, and we could see April or February lows in one day, today. And it yeah. did that. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm telling you, no one has a grip on the market like we do at Trick Trades. I'm yeah. telling you guys, there's, fuck man, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. You know, you know? We've, got, we've got a couple other factors in this equation, right? So we have the Fed speak Wednesday, which yeah. they're going to announce, they're going to raise interest rates again. So I don't know if that's already factored in, but you know, this market's crazy. Who knows how it's going to react? Trump's talking about shutting down government before Christmas. And we're dealing with the uh, tariffs with China still. Everybody's waiting on the news for that. Yeah. And everybody's talking recession next year. 2009 recession is coming. Yeah. 2019. You're living so in the past, man. all this garbage yeah. is happening in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not good news, guys. No. But we're ready. I, I can't wait. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're ready. And I can tell you exactly how markets like this will trade. Hey, yeah. go talk about what we were talking about before we started what was your thesis on, on the um, spy at close? Oh yeah, so it's funny, and I, I have a uh, a time stamped message in chat. Now whether it happens or not is a different story. I, I do believe that this is what's going to happen tomorrow morning. 
So for the fallout shelter early listeners that are going to catch the episode tonight or even early morning, um, you can definitely use this to your advantage. So, and then we'll get back to all those catalysts because I want to talk about each one of those catalysts individually and let you know, you know, different outcomes. Um, Okay, so the market freaked out uh, pretty well at the end of the day. It was really holding this like this 256, 255 type of level. I caught it on a last pop up. I caught it short right at two, uh, 258, no, two, 256 sixties. Okay. That's where I caught it. There's a quick little double top there. Uh, I was just risking off basically the high of the last candle. Uh, cause if it did break that little, that little base at the bottom there, it would rip up to VWAP fairly quick, right? So this was my last trade of the day. I was scalping in and out of the uh, of the market with some options, with some spy options. And then I took the equity. So took the equity and it it dumped out. It came through in a big way. So from that, you know, 250, 256, uh, uh, seventies, sixties entry. I don't have the entry off the top of my head. Um, it, it dumped out and, and then it based and then it came down some more and it went all the way down to lows today of about 253.50s. Okay, so I made about, I could have made about three points. I didn't catch the whole move. I got out right when it based again at 254.10ish, right? Right, 254.10, 254.20. And Man, the, even even just to trade just the, the the spy ETF is great right now. Even with even with shares, okay, not just the options. The right now the spy is a ranger. It's a it's an it's a great ranger. Uh, from that double top today at two sixty, okay, two sixty sixties. It's points and points away. You know, it's, it's nice, you know? Um, so anyways, what Tino's getting at is what I think is going to happen. So you had a bunch of people at the end of the day trying to buy this dip because it, the, the market came down so much. Okay. The market came down so much today that it, especially if it breaks lows, people are going to definitely be looking to buy the dip towards the end of the day, if, especially if it panics out. That's the dip buyer's mentality. The lower, think, the better, and they're going to look to get an up gap. Okay. Do you think they were waiting for it to bounce off that February low level? Is, is, is that what they were looking at? No, think? I, think, I, I think it was just because it was down. It oh, okay. seemed like as those like penny stock kids in a certain room that short shit because it's up. Right. right. These guys are buying the dip because it's it's just. Yeah. Right. Because it's down so much. Just buy it because it's down so much, which is a ridiculous notion. But um, so they're buying the dip towards the end of the day and averaging into the position, you know, adding to the adding to the biz position on the way down, looking to get an up gap. OK looking to get that short cover, looking to get those other dip buyers coming in. That's what we got at the end of the day, okay? So as soon as it broke those lows one more time um, and, it, and it reclaimed that, it, I said in chat, okay, it's, it's just going to squeeze back up. It, it, the lows are in. That's it. Low of days in. That's it. So people looking for this, this up gap tomorrow morning, they're going to have a surprise. This market is so fucking weak. So what's going to happen tomorrow morning is – the market most likely hit a high after hours at 256.60 or 255, no, 256.60. And that's as high as it's going to go. Okay. That's, that's it. So in the morning, when the market opens up pre market, it's probably going to, it's probably going to down gap because overnight, the, the, I can't see the futures going up. There's just, there's such incredible weakness right now. People are too scared. Nobody 
with half a brain is putting their money back into the market on a dip buy. <clears throat> okay. Like we're in, we're in fucking crash territory, man. So if this doesn't gap up uh, tomorrow morning, people are just going to exit. Oh, not just exit. Freak the fuck out. Yeah. You'll have, you'll have as soon as that market opens and you didn't get that gap up. Okay. Now you can look at it and okay, off of lows that, that gap, there is a gap up, but it's most people didn't, didn't dip by at lows. Okay. Right. So they have an average probably somewhere in the area of 255 50s or 256 50 somewhere in there. That would be their average. And as soon as they don't get that gap up, they are going to freak out as soon as that bell goes and they're going to sell and it's going to be panic selling. And man, people are going to get their asses handed to them right now, man, because they think that there's so many fucking people out there. It's incredible that are eternally long the market. Some, someone on, on Twitter today, uh, because I was posting a bunch of news articles that were out there from CNBC that were basically saying that we're, we're in a bear market and, and this and that. Um, you know, they can see that the market's going to come down lower from here. And he's, they're just like, you know, oh yeah, we'll see you back at 280 or, or, or 300, you know, or 2,800 yeah. and 3,000 before we see 230. It's like, are you fucking on drugs, man? Yeah. Are you on drugs? There's no way that's going to happen. Like the writing is on the wall at this point and it, and it drives me nuts that these people wonder why they lose every last fucking penny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I see why they're looking at 280 because it, it, it hit it three times but failed. But I don't know if they're waiting for that one last pop. I don't That's a ways to cove right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. You know, it's got to fight through the moving averages first and then get to 280. Ah, this is not going to happen. No, Especially no way. Coming up, no way. No, no way. You know, so there's a lot of people that are talking about, like Tino mentioned, all of these catalysts, okay? And uh, especially the Fed. So the Fed announcement on Wednesday at 2 p.m. or 2.30 p.m. I believe it's 2 p.m. That is a really key one. This one's very critical, Okay. So a lot of people think the dip buyer, the ones that are eternally long the market, their whole theory is that the, the Fed will not raise rates to save the market. They don't fucking care. They know that we're extended. They've already said they're going to raise them. Yeah. There's, you know? there's no news. Yeah. We already know that that's going to happen. But yet people still say, no, they're not going to raise them. They're not going to raise them. They're waiting for them to say, well, yeah, we're going to raise them, but this is the last time we're going to raise them. I think yeah. that's what they're going to, that's yeah. what they're hoping the good news is going to be. Yeah, exactly. So, so if that good news, like Tino just said, because that's the best, pretty well the best case scenario. So if that comes out for that day, the market will probably rip up. So I'm going to give you guys a little piece of advice. Wednesday at about 1.30 p.m., Get the fuck out of all of your day trading positions. Now, this happened last time they were talking, they had a Fed announcement. When the market just completely ripped faces off. Okay. The guys, and I got so pissed. There was probably about two or three people that didn't listen, excuse me, listen to me in the room, and they got murdered. And I was like, motherfucker, what do you mean you got murdered? How many times have I said since the beginning of that week, okay, at this time, this week, get the fuck out. And then that day comes by. I mentioned in the pre-market plan of attack. I mentioned at least twice during the morning session. And then right before I left to, to head off into town, I said, get out of your positions before 2 p.m. Get out. These fucking people don't listen, Tino. They don't yeah. listen. You know? Yeah. I don't know what that is, Tino. What is that? 
So uh, you have someone that has more experience than you, um, has a better grasp of the markets than you, and you're not going to listen. And yeah. you, pay them to, you pay them for their knowledge too, and you don't listen. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 well, got, it's, it's on some level that's ego. Well, it's ego and it's, you know, they're looking for the home run again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which is stupid, especially yeah. in the conditions we're in. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, you, you got play looking you gotta, for home runs. Yeah, you got to size down. I mean, you've you sized down considerably. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. See, it's funny, guys. There's two schools of thought here that in a market like this, you really hammer it with big size. Okay, but it's not cut and dry in a market like this because there's so many catalysts that are out there. One piece of news can rip your face off easily. Okay. And it's going to do damage to you, especially if you're in big size. The way I think, and there's a reason why 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, I can do this till the day I die and make money consistently. There's a reason for that. I don't get greedy guys. Okay. I always think of the downside before the upside. Always on every trade. That's the first thing I think about. What kind of damage can this do with the size I'm in? All right. So in a market like this, instead of big, taking big size and looking for that massive home run, I'm looking to use smaller size, what I consider smaller size, and let the range of the stock pay me instead of the size. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you notice there's, there's certain scalpers out there that take ridiculously stupid size, 40, 50, 60,000 shares on some garbage penny stock, buying some fucking dip or, or whatever, uh, you know, on some washout, right? Those break, break dance moves, like those, those typical break dance moves, like the washout yeah. long in the back. <laughs> <pop. Yeah. laughs> I think I'm going to name my dogs that too. Next, next <laughs> couple of dogs I get, it's going to be the, the washout long and panic pop. Um, but the, Instead of using size like that, all right, like why don't you just size down and 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 let the let the stock move, let it move. They come up and they come down during the day, right? Well, look at, I mean, I'm just looking at the charts that we had up today, right? Apple down. I mean, had a range about six points. Amazon seventy points. Netflix, seventy points. Netflix twelve points. Twelve Nvidia, points. Yep. Five points. I mean, all I can keep going on all these tracks. Look at Twitter. Yeah, Twitter was down what three points. Yeah, and which Twitter is, hardly ever moves. Yeah, and Twitter has a range of three points. Yeah, yeah. Use 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 the size. Like I on on Netflix personally, I caught about six points or so. I got in. My average was I remember this one off the top of my head two sixty nine seventy seven. Okay. So 269.77, and I took off the rest of my shares right in the uh, uh, 263 area. And yeah. then I only had, yeah, see that big washout. Fuck, I'm trying to think if I still had just a few. And by a few shares, I mean a few shares. I think I did. I think I did. I can't remember. I think it was such a small position left that that's why it's like I don't yeah. really even count it. I think I might have kept on like just very, very few at that point. But anyways, doesn't matter. Most of my position was out, if not all of the position was out in 263.30s because I was also scalping the market at the time and I was in the market. And my main focus was on the spy. So, um, yeah. But think about that, guys. And I chased it. I had a shitty entry on Netflix, too, because I'd already been done for the morning. The market wasn't ready to pull back yet. And in this market, I'm not necessarily looking to go long, okay? Um, you have too many failed breakouts and too many failed pops. And for me, I would rather sit back, put my feet up, um, go get ready upstairs to get ready to go to town and, and just wait for the proper short setup. 
okay? Wait for some topping action or wait, if I miss that topping action, wait for the, uh, the first lower high. And that's what it did. We got a lower high at 272 on, on Netflix. I missed that. Uh, I wasn't back downstairs yet. So as soon as I came back downstairs, it put in another slightly lower high, okay? And I just hit it. Just chase size, just chase size. Not a huge position, nothing like that. Chase size, okay? A lot of people don't know that you can actually chase a stock a little bit, right? If you know, now that's the thing. You can't just chase any play and on any stock and at any day and at any time. You can't be doing that. that then you're just a fucking dirty chaser, <laughs> right? Yeah. You don't want to be one of those. But if you know that you want to be a part of a play because the setup is there, but you're just a little bit late to the party for whatever reason, it's okay to get in. You just need to size appropriately, okay? And so I got in with chase size and man, it, fuck, my target was low of day and I pretty well got that target, you know, man, what a yeah. play, what yeah. a fucking play, you know, catching, catching six points or so on something, guys, come on. If you can't make a buck at that, I don't know what to tell you, you know? Yeah. On a day like today, there were so many plays and so many opportunities, you know, but so many people want to jump in these stocks right out of the gate. Yeah, I think you even said today, uh, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of our members are waiting like an hour. Yeah. Before they even enter a trade just because. That's, that's what we teach. We breed yeah. patient traders, man. You know? And um, there were opportunities this morning. Like I traded um, uh, NVIDIA. Hold on a sec here. Let me get it. So I was in NVIDIA and I was in Amazon. Was that Amazon? Fuck. I can't remember. Man, there were too many plays this morning, man. Shit, I don't remember off the top of my head. Amazon washed out and NVIDIA washed out. Yeah. Yeah, I added into Amazon today. Yeah. I, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. I was dumping out and I said, I'm going to wait till it gets back to VWAP. And Amazon, sure enough, every time it hits VWAP, it usually pokes its head above it for a little bit. And then comes down, and sure enough, it did. Yeah. And I added on there, and I wrote it all the way down today. I'm hold, I'm still holding Amazon. Yeah. And how many How many points do you have so far on? I've Amazon? got I've got about a cushion of about oh a hundred and hundred and twenty points now. Yeah. Like that's that's wild, man. And it's yeah. funny because, um, you know you you catch those types of trades fucking all the time, man. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's weird. You know, it's something where it, you just feel comfortable doing it. I can't explain it. Just like how you say when you see things on a chart, you can't explain it. That's yeah. how I kind of feel when I swing a trade. I'm like, I, I feel really comfortable in it. Number yeah. one, though, it's you, you can't just swing anything. You got to have enough room and have a cushion there. Yeah. So if it does go against you, it's not going to hurt you. And every time I ever swing, I usually have paid myself on that trade that day. So I've already cashed out some money and yeah. I let the rest ride. And what yeah. I did with Amazon is, you know, I was letting it ride from yesterday and I decided to add in because I saw it popping up, put in a double top and yeah. man, took it down some more. And now we'll see what happens. Yeah. I took that first pop back up on Amazon. And yeah. NVIDIA. Those were the two trades that I took this morning. And yeah. then I had one loss on MU. Oh, yeah. That, it that's... looked like it was, it was really good. There was, there was a beautiful double top there early yeah. in the day. So I decided to take it. And I let everyone know I was jumping in. I was going to get in on that double top. Super tight risk. Very minimal risk. I was going to give it up to that pre-market level. There's a pre-market level right at like that 3450 area. Yeah, that's what I, I was looking at. Yeah, and then I just got out. Right. Yeah, so 
it's okay to when you see these setups, guys. Remember, it's it's odds and probabilities. If you have a high odds uh, setup, take it, take it. And if it doesn't work and it wasn't big size, see, as soon as I make some money in the morning, I generally don't take a lot of size on my other trades. Um, I'll just kind of let the let the setup work, let that range of the day. I'm generally playing bigger picture ideas, right? I'm not looking for, it's funny because we have a chart of a guy that, and this is how he trades. The whole chart is just nothing but executions. <laughs> and it's fucking, it's I, ridiculous. It's, it's yeah. retarded actually. And it's funny because when a new trader sees something like that, they're like, wow, you're such a badass. Literally 147 executions on that one chart. Yeah. On some bullshit penny stock. Like his commissions alone are a few hundred bucks. Oh, probably more than that. And it's yeah. not even just that. It's just, just oh, man, how about you just show some patience in a trade? How about you just fucking stop for five minutes? <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. And it was like literally the whole day. <laughs> the whole day, it was just like nothing but executions. It's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's nonsense seeing a chart like that. Because like I said, a new trader looks at that and is just like, yeah, okay. So I take it that's how you trade. If you can't, if you look at a guy's chart with his executions and you can't even tell whether he was long or short and you can't uh, make heads or tails of it because there's literally like 150 fucking executions, guys. Yeah. Oh my God. Stop following that shit. Yeah. You know? And and it and it gave and thing is that chart read perfectly as a long. So add on your dips, pay yourself a couple, and then let the rest ride. Let yeah. the rest ride. You know, if, if you're a, in quotes professional, you should be able to judge the direction of the stock just by the trend alone. You should know roughly where it's going, especially somebody that's been doing this for years. You've seen that play over and over and over and over and over again. You yeah. know where these stocks are going. Come on, man. I mean, yeah. I do it every day. That's why I think a lot of people have a problem when they see that I shorted the top, the literal top, and I covered the literal bottom. Is it my whole position that I cover the, the, the complete bottom tick? No. But it's support and resistance, and you know where these stocks are going. It becomes second nature, guys. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's because the problem is when people see someone like me come around and I know I'm going to sound like I'm trying to, I'm blowing my own horn. I'm really not trying to do so. I'm just letting you know that there are skilled traders out there that are really good at what the fuck they do. Not just me, but there's other traders too, that as soon as you see that they, they short the top and they cover the bottom yet again, you know, people yeah. say, oh yeah, bullshit. No man, fuck that. Yeah. To me, that's just how you trade. It's support and resistance. You right. know the bigger picture idea of these stocks. I trade a small basket of stocks, guys. I trade roughly 12 to 15 stocks and that's it. I get to know these like the back of my yeah. fucking hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing with Amazon. Like I'm really focused on Amazon right now and, I, and, I, and here's why. Um, I've learned a lot about a trading over the last year. And here's, here's my, what I'm seeing on Amazon. If you look at Amazon's chart, and I know this is going to sound kind of funny, but it's true. And this is why I'm thinking Amazon is going to come down to 1400. I could be wrong, but I don't, but here's why. If you look at the chart, Amazon likes to blow through the 1400s. It doesn't really have any solid levels in the 1400s. We're right at 1520. Yeah. It's not going to take a lot to get through four, get in the 1400s. Once it gets in the 1400s, it doesn't like it. It's either going to go all the way down to 1400 or come back up. I don't know. But that's kind of my plan with that right now. And I'm going to, if it comes up a little bit more tomorrow, I might add in a little bit more. I've got so much room on the thing. Yeah, it's not yes, going to bother yeah, me. It's a ridiculous amount and of room. Yeah. I'm going to see if it goes all the way down to 1400. It did it a little while ago. 
I mean, and we're coming up with some bad news. And Amazon likes to go to the market and it can dump out 100, 150 points in a day. Easy. Oh, easy. Yeah, easy. See, and that's the thing. And that's, you know, Tino is a true testament of Trick Trades education and him really listening and not fighting the information, really taking it in and soaking it in. And the, um, where he's come in a year is incredible, guys. Okay. He was in a very famous penny stock room. And if you listen back to the old, the old uh, fallout shelters, um, uh, he talks about it. And he gained nothing from that. There's no real market insight there. Of, of why these stocks move like they do. Getting to know the daily chart of these stocks, like the back of your hand. That daily chart is so important, guys. Yeah. That is, really the, is. The, the granddaddy of all trading charts, is the daily chart. Because the majority of traders use it. It's all about the volume of traders, okay? And... He's become a highly skilled motherfucker. He really has. This yeah. is what he just said on Amazon. He formulated his himself. Those are his thoughts. I breed traders that can actually think for themselves. Isn't that what you want? But the reason I came up with that plan on Amazon is because of what you it it's based off your Support and resistance theories. That's all it's based on, guys. Yeah. It's it. None guys, of these I'll teach you shit that no one's ever taught you before about support and resistance. And that may sound like a bold statement, but why do you think I'm probably one of the most highly, most ripped off traders out there, right? Yeah. I am. I am. Now, and you take a stock like Amazon – you know, it's an expensive stock. So the big boys are throwing a lot of money in this stock. So what are they going to do? They're, of course, they're going to respect levels and support and resistance. They've got yeah. too much money riding on it. Yeah. You they know have what I mean? To. They have to respect it. They have to. Yeah. Because those positions are massive. Massive. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I just, it's so hard to... Um, get people to, to listen because they've been involved with so many just like charlatans out there. You know what yeah, I mean? Totally. And it's, uh, it's really frustrating because I know the type of traders that I breed. And if more people would just, you know, what, well, you got nothing to lose, man. And just no. really listen to the stuff I'm teaching. And man, the sky's the limit. You know what was sky's great about limit. today? On the MU trade, you were talking in the room. And you were looking at a level, you called it out in the room. And I took a trade based off exactly what you said. And it's this simple. Yeah. I took the trade almost at the top. And I risked 8 to 10 cents because if it went past that, it's going to go higher. That's all I did. And all I said is, well, if it breaks that, I just take it off. That's it. That's it's it. that simple. It really is that simple. And it's I didn't not... realize it until I did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's... It, was, it was approaching high a day. I'm like, okay, I'll try and short it because it, it was reaching pre-market levels. I said, if it breaks it, I'm out. It's that simple. Take it off. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I think a large part of the problem is there's so many there's so many traders out there that are so afraid to lose and and show losses and this and that that it man, you better don't, be a good loser. Don't fight it, man. Yeah, well, just that's and, why these fucking people lose. They they fight shit. They fight it and fight it and fight it and fight it yeah. until they're just fucking they're so underwater they can't sell it. And you know what was what else is so obvious I didn't realize and it took me a long time to realize this. You get out of the trade, just re-enter. Just wait and reset. I'm like, wait a minute. You can actually reset and re-enter the same stock? I didn't even, that didn't even occur to me. You know yeah. what I mean? I yeah. figured if I tried that stock, I lost. Fuck. Yeah. It's done. Yeah, it's done. It's over. No, I always tell people, just wait for the reset. Not yeah. a big deal. Take it off and wait for the reset. 
You know, yep. it's funny because MU, <clears throat> I was kind of pissed because after I took off MU, I was watching it for a while, watching it for a while, and I'm starting to notice the time, and it's like, I got to start getting ready. And, excuse me, I, I missed that. It was perfect, that backside. That backside oh, of man. MU with that first lower high yeah, was perfect. It rejected yeah. that 3550 area perfectly yeah you know and it's it, it really is that simple guys i'm telling you i can teach you some of the most basic simple easy to follow instructions that if you just listen to me and be patient you could quit your jobs tomorrow and i know that's a bold statement and it sounds like i'm selling a dream but i'm telling you man, it really is that simple you know it's funny because i'll go back to that that chart with the 147 executions. <laughs> guys, I just think I just it's so funny to see it. If you it guys is. could see this chart, you'd it's, laugh. It's ridiculous. It, it is. It's ridiculous. I have such a problem with that because, like I said, so many new traders they see a chart like that and they become in awe of it. They're like, "Whoa, that's amazing! Look at that! This guy knows yeah. what he's doing." You know what I see when I see a chart like that? I see someone that has the emotional worth of a teenager, yeah. some hormoned out teenager. That's what I see. Those, you, those entries and exits ah, are skittish like a deer. In, yeah. in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, all fucking day. Oh my God, I would shoot myself. Can, can you right imagine there. being a member, like trying to follow his strategy during the, like if he's you, talking in real time, you, no, okay, I'm in, I'm out. Way. I'm in. I'm out. You know what I mean? Like, no way. I, that is such a high stress. Uh, it's 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 being scared in a trade. Yeah, and then you want to you want to you want alerts off something like that. Could you imagine waiting for an alert on a trade like that? <laughs> your phone would be going nuts. You'd yeah. be losing your mind. Yeah, exactly. Oh God, nonsense, guys. 147, and that's just what I could count. Yeah, and I actually think there's more because there's most likely that arrows was one chart side of arrows. Yeah, and that was just one chart. Yeah, he had a couple other charts. Yeah. Yeah. The guy's either got like a fucking eight ball of Coke on his desk and he's just going into these trades. I don't know what he's doing, but man. Well, the guy looks like he's on Adderall or something. <laughs> yeah. I used to think it was Coke, but I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's Coke. I think it's just like Adderall or like a shitload of like fucking Ritalin or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. I don't know what it is, but guys, I'm telling you, when you see a chart like that, that's nothing to be in awe of. I'm telling you, it's not. There is a better, less stressful way to trade. And I can show you how to hit very close to bottoms and very close to tops. And no, it's not about picking tops or bottoms, guys. There's a lot of misinformation out there when people say, oh, yeah, don't be picking tops and don't be picking bottoms. Yeah, you don't want to pick tops and bottoms, but you can. There's such an easy way to enter these stocks that if you're patient and you just wait, I'm telling you. And like I say every morning in Trick Trades on Screen Share, I say, just wait. I promise you, these stocks will give you an entry and you'll see the entry and you'll be there now. Yeah. Click. It's that simple. The only thing that's standing in your way is you as well as the bad information that's out there. Yeah. Because there's a lot of it, guys. There's a lot of it. You know, people like to go on and on about how I, um, I rarely, oh, yeah, he, he rarely takes losses. Yeah, you're right. That's right. I rarely do take losses. Do you realize how fucking patient I am? It's not, not with me. I, yeah, not with Tino. <laughs> Definitely not with Tino. But I tell Tino everything. Yeah. And I, I know Tino well enough that if he figured that I was a dishonest person, he wouldn't be here. I know he wouldn't. I tell Tino literally everything. There's not a secret or anything that I keep from him. 
I love this guy like a brother. I bust his balls, and yeah, he's a total fucking homo. Yeah, that's right. I said homo. <laughs> How politically incorrect of me. Jeez. But, <laughs> but I'm telling you guys, you know, all, all joking aside, there's, there really is a truly a better way to trade, and there's no better place to be right now in the market than at Trick Trades. Yeah. Do you know that I have guys in my room that were a part of the 0809 crash and they became so damaged by it that they literally could not place a trade. They could not pull the trigger because they lost millions of dollars. Hmm. Okay. And that's, that's wild, man. Think about that. And we are on the cusp of that. Do you really want to be that guy for the next 10 years? You won't be able to place a trade. Is that the guy you want to be? And I'm sure there's people out there right now that are already starting to notice massive losses because they, they can't trade this market. They don't know how to trade it. I'm con yeah. I can tell you right now, I've spoken with so many people, so many people that have been through multiple crashes, 20, 30 year vets. And they've been through the uh, the tech bubble and the 08, 09 mortgage crisis. And I have picked their fucking brains. You have no idea. And there's a reason why I looked at the spy chart and I called candle for candle what it was going to do last week as well as today's candle. Okay. There's a reason for that. And no, it's not about making calls. It's not about that. It's one big history lesson though. And if you're perceptive enough, you'll be able to really hit these, these trades out of the park. This is when fortunes are made. Do you know that Warren Buffett made a large part of his fortune selling puts on the way down of the mortgage crisis? Yeah. Okay. He knew what he was doing. All right. No, I'm not obviously <laughs> comparing myself to Warren Buffett. I'm nowhere near that level. But I'm just telling you guys, there are people out there that don't have a huge name that really know what the fuck they're doing. And not only just that, I really have your guys' best interests at heart. And, you know, I just, I really want the opportunity to bring that number of failed traders up. You know how it's a whole 90, 95% of traders fail. I know I can get that number up at least with the traders at trick trades. I know I can get that number up and I know I've done it. I've already done it. Yeah. I get hit up constantly, especially with the boss, the boss assassin option strategy. They tell, and when I say it's a life changing strategy and a life changing video, that's not a self proclamation guys. I get my balls busted on Twitter for saying that, but guys, those aren't even my words. They're not my words. I've literally had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have got this. And I've heard from the majority of them. Most people just don't reach out. The majority of them saying that this is life changing. Yeah. You know what else is crazy? Well, you know what else they say a lot? You don't charge enough for your information. Yeah, I know that. that. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. We are undervalued. Big time. Way undervalued. And, yeah. you know, I, we're going to make some changes after the first of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know? it's time people actually appreciate the, the information that they're given. Because, man, I had a guy in chat today said that he would pay 10 times what he paid for on the Boss Assassin video and still yeah. be very happy with it. It changed his life. Give me an opportunity to change your life, guys. That's what yeah. I want. I really want that. I've always started trick trades with the mission to, to change people's lives. And I know I can do it. You just got to give me an opportunity and stop listening to these fucking idiots that are out there. You know, there's people out there that, you know, they, they always want to take you down when you, when you get to the top. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't have any competition. I really don't. There isn't, there isn't a service out there that is on the same level as trick trades. I don't care what they say. I know what my members say and I know what I have to say. And 
you know, when, when, when the only thing that they have on you is that a member photoshopped a logo of trick trades onto the NASDAQ and I reposted it on Twitter and that's deceptive. Do you know how fucking retarded that is? <laughs> it's you so have to be a complete fucking retard to think <laughs> that that's, I was really trying to be deceptive. <laughs> Like you're a fucking idiot, right? People like are okay. so sensitive. People are so oh, stupid these yeah, days. Yeah, Come complete, on. complete fucking like just snowflake, Ugh. like fucking pussies, Ugh, dude. Yeah. Don't even get me started. Yeah, complete babies. Like that's what you have. That's yeah. what you have to complain about. Yeah. Right. And that I made a call on Tesla. And I pointed with a chart that where the call was and where I said to cover up. It was a trade we took, guys. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah. You know? So yeah. it's like, if that's all you guys got, fuck off. Yeah. Clowns. Right. <laughs> it's so funny because if, you know, and it's funny because I've actually wanted to reach out to these, to these, these people, uh, two trolls in particular, and say, hey, look, man, come into Trick Trades. Test it out for a week. But there's just there's just no point. There's no point. They they're not going to have an open mind about it, and it sucks because I really would love to do that. But there's no way that they would have an open mind because I know if they were to come in for a fucking week, they would be okay. Yeah, we get it. You you're not like those other guys. The amount yeah. of time alone that I spend on people. I had a new member come in, and this guy has an extremely large account. And he was one of the people that I'm talking about right now that he just, he can't trade this market. He's a guy that is long biased and he doesn't know what the fuck is he's doing right. Excuse me right now. And he's lost an extreme amount of money. So he came to trick trades and he wrote me a DM as soon as he got in. And the second I got back into my office, I replied to him and I said, okay, well, this isn't going to work over a, you know, some sort of typing in chat. Uh, I sent him a screen share link and we talked for about a half an hour last night and um, kind of coached him through uh, some shit that he was going through today, uh, kind of cleaning up the the previous mess that he's in. And I'm, I fucking made a vow to him. I told him he has my word and I give everyone my word. I will fucking do whatever I have to do to make sure you make it, you know? Yeah. Nobody's going to fucking do that, man. And there's a certain someone that's out there that always loves to say he's the only one doing things. Shit. I was doing it long before you were, bud. Yeah. You know, he's the only one that, that offers mentoring. Your mentoring is, is nothing but, you know, it's nonsense. I've seen it. Me and Tino have seen it firsthand. Yeah. And we pissed our pants laughing. Yeah. It was a joke. It was a total joke. Guys, when when your service is their video lessons are nonsense ramblings and propaganda, you're in the wrong place, guys. Wake the fuck up. If you don't have uh, an extreme amount of education at your disposal, you're in the wrong place. Trick Trades is way more than a chat room, guys way more we've got so much cool education coming out uh, oh. after the first of the year man i because i'm working on it now and just the production value alone is but is awesome but the education is going to be it's going to be awesome man i can't wait it's going to be mind-blowing and, it's stuff that's never i'm telling you it's never been done yeah. before never yeah. And that just goes to show that nobody gives a shit enough to try new and interesting things to get through to people. Tino and I are constantly coming up with new ideas and new methods to get through to people because that's that's what my goal is to get through to people. We're actually changing the format of Fallout Shelter after the first of the year. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. You guys are going to be able to see us. And I know sometimes, guys, we talk about charts and stuff, and you're just listening. You're trying to picture in your head. Well, now you're going to be able to see it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's going to be great, guys. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be great. So really looking forward to that. I've got a boss assassin part two coming out. Yeah. And this is going to tell you how to trade the spy, something that I do all the time. And I've got such a high win rate on it. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do the same. 
If yeah. you like the first boss assassin, this boss assassin two is going to teach you how to trade the market ETFs, but especially the spy, especially the spy. Yeah. I have a very laid out specific strategy for it that, I mean, it works. It works amazing. Yeah. The spy is actually quite predictable. Now it can be a little erratic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you need to pick your battles and I'll never trade on days where there's huge catalyst. It's not my style. It's safety above all, you mm -hmm. know? So we have that coming up. Uh, we have the war room coming up. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Cool. We have war chest coming out. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh, we're, we're also doing everybody a huge favor because Wednesday we're doing our 12 days of Christmas sale. And this is the last opportunity to get our education at a discount because yeah. like we said, and it's not because we want a fleece cut. That's not what we're doing. No. But everybody is telling us that your education is so undervalued and you know what? You, you need to, it is. It is. And so we're not raising, bottom line, it is. We're, we're going to raise prices at the first of the year. So you have 12 days starting Wednesday. You're going to have 12 days to get all our education and Savage scans at a, at a discount. Yeah. So um, yeah. well worth it. And, and it's going to be the last time you're going to see those prices that low, you know? Yeah, definitely. So. Yeah. And we're not, you know, that's the thing, guys. We don't do many sales throughout the year. We had a Black Friday sale where a bunch of people fucking jumped on the bandwagon saying, oh, yeah, sales are, sales are for losers. We don't do sales because we just don't do sales. Well, you know, and it's like, that's it nonsense. People. I've always started trick trades to bring, um, bring the education, proper education to the masses. Okay. Yeah. And I even started trick trades as a, as a free service. It just, guys, I'm telling you, it didn't fucking work out. I had so many meatheads in the room that just didn't take it serious enough. And trick trades is for serious traders only. Yeah, it's guys. For, it's for people that they, right. they want to change their trading around. And, and honestly, guys, if you guys don't have skin in the game, are you really going to take the information serious? You won't. If you bought a product for $27, $47, are you really going to pay attention? Or are you just going to be like, ah, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah. But if you have skin in the game, gonna are you going to pay serious. attention? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And our education is serious. Like, it's the top. It's the yeah. best. It's, it is the best. It is the best. A lot of people make that bold claim. And we've seen the education and it is, it's fucking laughable. It's yeah. laughable. It's, it's nothing but high school bullshit full of like just elementary. Yeah. It's nonsense. It's, it's stupid. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and if a guy's laughing at that type of education, you know, think about the, the shit that he's got under his, you know, up his sleeve. Like, man, yeah, right? it's incredible education guys. It really isn't yeah. incredible. You know, yep. five, 10 years from now, we're going to be known as the, as the place to be. Yeah. You know, we're not stopping until we fucking dominate period. Yep. You know, our brand of education needs to get out to people and it is going to get out to people, you yeah. know? So, um, so remember guys, we got a bunch of catalysts coming up this yep. week before we wrap it up. Um, I just want to let you guys know, um, Oh yeah. And that, by the way, that sale starts on Wednesday, Wednesday at midnight. Uh, there's no coupon code. Just go to the site and it's just a, a direct purchase. Yeah. The prices are already be discounted. Yeah. So. It won't be on memberships or anything though. That's already no. discounted enough as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Um, but as for these catalysts, so Wednesday, Wednesday, 2 PM, we have the fed announcement. So make sure that you shut your shit down about a half an hour before, because we don't know what's going to happen. That's a total crapshoot. We, we may think we kind of know, you know what I mean? We may yeah. think, oh yeah, this is what they're going to do. But I'm telling you guys, we have no idea what they're, what they got in store that we don't only the people behind closed doors know that. And there's no point in trying to predict that. Remember, guys, it's not about prediction. Some of the things that I say, it may almost sound like, well, it kind of sounds like you're predicting. No. No, 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 no. It's speculation and it's completely different. 
It's a completely different ball game. Uh, this isn't. This is something that definitely you don't want to be speculating because if you're wrong, you're going to get like smoked. Yeah, smoked. So make sure to take that off. Um, we have the China U.S. Uh, trade war, the tariffs. Uh, guys, this isn't going to be resolved for a really long time. Don't let the president kind of fool you into thinking that they've or he's already struck a deal. There's no deal. There probably isn't going to be a deal for a very long time, if not like mid 2019 type of shit, guys. Like there's even if he says there's a deal, it's not going to be a full fledged deal. OK, just because, you know, uh, they bought a bunch of fucking soybeans. That doesn't mean shit. OK, so don't let that fool you. They're letting us see what they want us to see, guys. Always think of uh, other probable outcomes, okay? And and you got to really start thinking for yourself, which is another thing that trick trades will definitely get you doing, is how to see the market with open eyes, okay? Um, what else? What's another... Um, what's a, what, what was the third... Uh, well, I mean, everybody's talking about the recession that's coming in 2009, 2019, 2019 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, the tariffs of China. Um, yeah, this, this crash will be known as the credit crisis. Yeah. Very extended, guys. Very extended. It's something that nobody's really talking about. And that's what this cr crash is going to be labeled as. Because I got, I always get hit up. It's like, well, you know before it was the mortgage crisis and it was the tech bubble. Yeah, but the thing is guys, nobody really talked about it until after the fact. That's kind of how these crashes work. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they don't, they don't, as it's happening, they're not calling it the mortgage crisis. It's, they wait until it's already way down before they, they try and pin the tail on the donkey and give some blame to something, right? So um, yeah. be aware of very big moves Okay. Now for the guys that stuck around for the entire podcast, what I'm going to be looking for on how to trade this is you really only want gap ups, gap ups or a push in the morning. Okay. Then you're going to wait and you're going to be patient. You're not going to chase that. You're not looking for a long, you're only looking for the short. And if you miss a big green day, you miss a big green day. It's not a big deal guys. Okay. So you wait for that topping action to get set in and then that lower high after it's extended. And if you get stopped out once, that's fine. Just be patient. Really wait for it. Okay. And then you're going to short it back down for the fade the rest of the day. Scenario two, you get a gap down or a quick sell off. Just wait. Don't chase that back up, guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What did it do today? What did it do today? We got a gap down, a big sell off, and then it just ripped back up. Yeah. Just wait for that rip. It needs to push. Remember, push will pay. Tell yourself that every morning, the push will pay, okay? And not the same way that the push pays for Tino. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, What's wrong with a couple glory holes in my best? You know what I mean? <laughs> just, so a Just a couple. Just a couple. Just a couple. Jeez. <laughs> Do it one time and mark for life, man. Jeez. You know, guys, I, I will kind of fill you in on just one thought that I'm having. And it is something that is on my mind quite a bit when we do talk about trick trades on the Follow Shelter podcast. I don't want you guys to ever think that Fallout Shelter is just a commercial for trick trades. Of course it is on some level, right? I want to let you guys know the type of the type of information and the type of education that we bring to the table. But I also want to let you guys know that I'm really not trying to just push a bunch of product onto you. Buy it, don't buy it, whatever. I'm just letting you know that the opportunity's there. So when you listen to the to the podcast and you know you hear us talking about products or or our chat room or our service, you know, it's I really, I hate for people to get the wrong idea. I really do. I don't want to be looked at as, as some marketer. Okay. You know, and yeah. I do get pegged as that. Hey guys, what can I say? When it comes to uh, promoting something that I believe in, I will, I will go at it tooth and nail fucking rights. I will. I believe in this. 
you know, and I just really want the opportunity to be able to, to really pass on the information that I know. And I want to grow along with you guys. You know, where I was when I started trick trades to where I am now, I'm a very different trader, you know, and, and it's about evolving, right? When you kind of lay stagnant and you just are completely in your comfort zone all the time, you will never grow. You need to get out of your comfort zone, guys. Okay. Let me take you there. Let me take you outside of your comfort zone and let me guide you. Let me do that for you because I'm telling you, you'll never look back. There's a certain individual that was in a certain penny stock room, a very famous one, paying five grand a year for it for two years now. And he hasn't seen any type of success. The first month he came to trick trades would have been his first green month. And then he traded a penny stock and then he fucked that up. Then month two, he was on his track to be on a green month and then he pissed me off and I fucking booted him from the room because he didn't appreciate what I was offering him. When somebody gives you opportunity, guys, don't, don't just slap them in the face, okay? And try and play both sides of the field because it won't work, all right? Life's about picking sides and it's a shame that he chose the side he did because now he's basically blowing the fuck up again. Yet again, and he was in a, in the right place where I was firing up screen shares with him and discussing, you know, strategies and, and really help wanting to help him. And that's on him. Okay. And it sucks. It kind of came to that, but it is what it is. You know, I wish him yeah. the best, but good luck, man, because I just don't think so. He was in the right place. He yeah. really was. He really was. And it's a testament to our, to our education and our knowledge at how quickly he turned himself around. Yeah. It was within the first couple of few weeks, guys, that he turned around. And, you know, it's, it's a fucking shame. It's a shame he tried playing both sides of the field. That's just a little lesson in life, guys. Don't ever play both sides of the field because if someone sniffs you out and figures you out, they're going to fucking, they're going to turn their back on you real quick. Just like I did. I don't go for that whole fucking both sides of the fence bullshit. Life's about picking sides and life's about commitment. So, you know, if, if you're going to go in, go all in, you know, and like I said, yeah. guys, give me the opportunity to take you out of your comfort zone because it's, I'm telling you, it'll be, it'll be a cool ride, man. I know it yep. will. So on that note, yeah. Let's wrap her up, folks. All right. All right. Tino oh, yeah. to the stage. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. Well, you got anything else to say, fuckface? No, nah, man. It's all good. Looking forward to the next couple of days. Everybody keep an eye out for the sale we got going on. It's just top quality education. Chance to get in. And uh, look out for next year, man. We're coming strong. We got some lot of good education. Oh, we got shit that's just this fucking good. It's going to be awesome. So. Oh, not to mention shotgun too. Shotgun yeah. is fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, folks. So let's wrap it up. Be cool. watching Wednesday at midnight for sale to go live. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Make sure to check out tricktrades.com. Later, guys. Cool. Later, See fuck face. You got it, you freaking idiot. That's all, I, that's all I could come up with. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Later, guys. Later. Later, Tino. Yeah. <laughs>